Hey, my name is Jeremy. I'm going to be reading from Wild at Heart, John Eldridge. This will be page 109, Thwarting the False Self. This is uh, in the Father's Voice is the name of the chapter. Thwarting the False Self. From the place of our woundedness, we, cannot, we construct a false self. We find a few gifts that work for us and we try to live off them. Stuart found he was good at math and science. He shut down his heart and spent all of his energies perfecting his Spock persona. There, in the academy, he was safe. He was also recognized and rewarded. Alex was good at sports and the whole macho image. He became a glass-eating animal. Stan became the nicest guy you could ever meet. In the story of my life, he admitted, I wanted to be seen as the nice guy. I became a hard-charging perfectionist. There in my perfection, I found safety and recognition. When I was eight, confesses Vernon Manning, the imposter of or false self was born as a defense against pain. The imposter within whispered, Brennan, don't ever be your real self anymore because nobody likes you as you are. And then a new self that everybody will admire and nobody will know. Notice the key phrase, as a defense against pain, as a way of saving himself. The imposter is our plan for salvation. So God must take it all away. This often happens at the start of our initiation journey. He thwarts our plan for salvation. He shatters the false self. In the last chapter, I told you of Brad's plan for self-redemption. He would belong to the inside group. Even after it failed him time and time again, breaking his heart over and over, he wouldn't give it up. He simply thought his aim, aim was off. If he found the right group, then his plan would work. Our plan for redemption is hard to let go of. It clings to our hearts like an octopus. So what did God do for Brad? He took it all away. God brought Brad to the point where he thought he had found the group, and then God prevented him from maneuvering his way in. Brad wrote me a letter to describe what he was going through. God has taken all that away, stripped me of all the things I used to earn people's admiration. I knew what he was up to. He put me in a place where my heart's deepest wounds and arrows and sin came out. As I was weeping all these pictures of what I want to belong to came up. A speaker, a counselor, and a group. And it was as if Jesus asked me to give them up. What came from my heart was surprising, incredible fear. And then the image of never getting them. A sentence arose in my heart. You want me to die? If I give those up, then I'll never belong and be somebody. You are asking me to die. It has been my hope of salvation. Why would God do something so cruel? Why would he do something so terrible as to wound us in the place of our deepest wounds. Jesus warned us that whoever wants to save his life will have to lose it. Luke 9.24 Christ is not using the word bios here. He's not talking about our physical life. The passage is not about trying to save your skin by ducking martyrdom or something like that. The word Christ uses for life is the word psyche, the word for our soul, our inner self, our heart. He says that the things we do to save our psyche, our self, those plans to save and protect our inner life, those are the things that will actually destroy us. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death, says Proverbs 16.25, the false self. Our plan for redemption seems so right to us. It, it shields us from pain and secures us a little love and admiration. But the false self is a lie. 
The whole plan is built on pretense. It's a deadly trap. God loves us too much to leave us there, so he thwarts us in many, many different ways. In order to take a man into his womb so that he can heal it and begin to release the release of the true self, God will thwart the false self. He will take away all that you learned upon to bring you life. In the movie The Natural, Robert Redford is a baseball player named Roy Hobbs, perhaps the most gifted baseball player ever. He's a high school wonder boy, a natural who gets a shot at the big leagues. But his dreams of professional career are cut short when Hobbs is wrongly sentenced to prison for murder. Years later, an aging Hobbs gets a second chance. He's signed by the New York Knights, the worst team in the league. But through his incredible gift, untarnished by the years, Hob leads the Knights from ignominy <laughs> to the playoff game for the National League pennant. He rallies the team, becomes the center of their hopes and dreams. The climax of the film is the game for the championship. It's the bottom of the ninth. The score is Pittsburgh 2, the Knights are 0. The Knights have two outs. There's a man on first and third when Hobbs steps up to the plate. He's their only chance. This is his moment. Now, there's something you must know, something absolutely crucial to the story. Ever since his high school days, Hobbs has played with a bat he made himself from the heart of a tree felled by lightning in the front yard. Burned into the bat is a lightning bolt and the words Wonder Boy. That bat is the symbol of greatness, his giftedness. He has never ever played with another. Clutching Wonder Boy, Hobbs steps to the plate. His first swing is a miss. His second is a foul ball high and behind. His third is a solid hit along the first baseline. It looks like it's a home run, but it lands foul. As Hobb returns to the plate, he sees his bat lying there in pieces. It shattered on the last swing. This is a critical moment in a man's life when all he has counted on comes crashing down, when his golden bat breaks into pieces. His investments fail, his company lets him go, the church fires him, he is leveled by an illness, his wife walks out, his daughter turns up pregnant. What is he to do? Will he stay in the game? Will he shrink back to the dugout? Will he scramble to try to put things back together as so many men do? The true test of man, the beginning of his redemption, actually starts when he can no longer rely on what he's used all his life. The real journey begins when his false self fails. A moment that seems like an eternity passes as Hobbes stands there, holding the broken pieces, surveying the damage. The bat is beyond repair. Then he says to the bat, boy, go pick me out a winner, Bobby. <laughs> he stays in the game and hits a home run to win the series. God will take away our bat as well. He would do something to thwart the false self. Stewart saved himself by becoming emotionless. Last year, his wife walked out on him. She had it with his two-dimensional existence. What, what women, woman wants to be married to Spock? Alex recently suffered a series of panic attacks that left him almost unable to leave his home. The whole macho construct fell to the ground. At first, nobody could believe it. Alex couldn't believe it. He was invincible, the strongest guy you ever met. But it was all built as a defense against the wound. Oh, our loss doesn't necessarily have to become something so dramatic. A man may simply awaken one day to find himself lost, lost as Dante described himself. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in the dark woods where the true way was wholly lost. That was the turning point in my life. 
I went to Washington, D.C. as a young man to try to make something of myself, to prove something, establish credibility. The damnable thing about it was I succeeded. My giftedness worked against me by coming through for me. I was recognized and rewarded, but the whole experience felt like an act of survival, not, not something flowing out of a deep center, but something I had to prove, overcome or grasp. As Manning said of his own imposter, I studied hard, scored excellent grades, won a scholarship in high school, and was stalked every waking moment by the terror of abandonment and the sense of nobody was there for me at the end of the of two years. I woke one morning and realized I hated my life. Hmm. How many helps thou givest to those who would learn? To some sore pain, to others a sinking heart. To some a weariness worse than any smart. To some a taunting, to some a haunting, fearing, blind concern. Madness to some, to some the shaking dart. Of hideous death still followed as they turn to some a hunger that will not depart. To some thou givest a deep unrest, a scorn of all they are or see upon the earth, a gaze at dusky night in clearing morn, as on a land of emptiness and dirt. To some a bitter sorrow, to some the sting of love misprized, of sick abandoning, to some a frozen heart, oh, worse than anything. The messengers of Satan think to mar, but, but make driving the soul from false to feel. To thee, the reconciler, the one real, in whom alone the would be and the is are met. George MacDonald, Diary of an Old Soul. Interesting. This is a very dangerous moment when God seems set against everything that has meant life to us. Satan spies his opportunity and leaps to accuse God in our hearts. You see, he says, God is angry with you. He's disappointed in you. If he loved you, be, if he loved you, he would make things smoother. He's not out for your best, you know. The enemy always tempts us back toward control to recover, rebuild the false self. We must remember that it is out of love that God thwarts our imposture. As Hebrews reminds us, it is the Son whom God disciplines, therefore do not lose heart. Hebrews 12, 5-6 God thwarts us to save us. We think it is to destroy us, but... The opposite is true. We must be saved from what really will destroy us. If we walk with him in our journey of masculine initiation, we must walk away from the false self. Set it down. Give it up willingly. It feels crazy. It feels immensely vulnerable. Brad has stopped looking for the group. Stuart has begun to open up his heart to emotion, to relationship, to all that he buried so long ago. Alex stopped eating glass, stopped the whole macho thing to, to face what he had never faced inside. I gave up perfectionism, left Washington, and went looking for my heart. We simply accept the invitation to leave all that we relied on and venture out with God. We can choose to do it ourselves or we can wait for God to bring it all down. If you have no clue as to what your false self may be, then a starting point would be to ask those you live with and work with, what is my effect on you? What am I like to live with or work with? What don't you feel free to bring up with me? If you never ever say a word in a meeting because you fear you might say something stupid, well then, it's time to speak up. If all you ever do is dominate the meaning because your sense of worth comes from being in charge, then you need to shut up for a while. If you run to sports because you feel best about yourself there, then it's probably time to give it a rest and stay home with your family. 
you never play any game with other men, then it's time you go down to the gym with guys and play some hoops. In other words, you face your fears head on. Drop the fig leaf, come out from hiding for how long? Longer than you want to, long enough to raise the deeper issues. Let the wound surface from beneath it all. Losing the false self is painful. Though it's a mask, it's one we've worn for years and losing it can feel like losing a close friend. Underneath the mask is all the hurt and fear we've been running from, hiding from. To let it come to the surface can shake us like an earthquake. Brad felt as if he was going to die. You may too. Or you may feel like Andy Gallahorn, who wrote the song Steel Bars from Old Hat. So this is how it feels at the rock bottom of despair. When the house I built comes crashing down. And this is how it feels when I know the man that I say I am is not the man that I am when no one's around. But this is not the end of the road, it's the trailhead. What you are journeying toward is freedom, healing, authenticity. Authenticity. Listen to the next part of Andy's song. This is how it feels to come alive again and start fighting back to gain control and this is how it feels to let freedom in and break the chains that enslave my soul. All right, this is in the chapter, The Father's Voice, that's page uh, 115, ended on 115. Was that 107 to 115? It is. Page 107 to 115, Contempt for the Wound. Ooh. See you later.